Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models. In this video, I'm going to walk through how you can take your pictures from this to this through the dark magic of focus stacking. So, what is focus stacking? Well, the very basic explanation is that focus stacking is the combination of multiple images, each with a unique focus point, into a single image where every detail of your subject is in nice, sharp focus. Basically, it's a way to tell depth of field to get the fuck out, and it's super useful when you're dealing with oddly proportioned subjects, or even just a tank with a really long barrel. Now, some modelers complain that focus stacking is tedious. Well, you know what else is tedious? Cleaning up sprue tabs, cleaning mold seams on road wheels, sanding anything, debating whether or not modeling is art, filling seams, riveting anything, assembling tracks, installing photo etch flaps or dive brakes, wiring up engines and gear struts, and much much more. Now, many modelers will maintain that those things are totally worth it. And so is this. So let's get into it. First, we need to take some pictures. For this, I'll be using my photo table and Nikon D8. D850 can do focus bracketing on its own, but for me, it's kind of like setting the camera in auto. It'll do what it thinks is right, but that doesn't mean that it is right. Personally, I get better results controlling the focus points myself. Most modern DSLRs have some kind of touch-operated focus and capture functionality, and that's what I use on the 850. Tapping the screen selects the focus point, triggering the autofocus, and once everything's dialed in, triggering the shutter as well. Capture a bunch of different focus points, you literally just tap around the subject. I don't have like a mathematical formula or anything for this, but I generally try to focus on corners and focal areas, wingtips, tails, prop spinners, cockpits, exhausts. On a tank, it might be the visible corners of the hull, plus the turret, and maybe some additional steps along the barrel depending on how long it is and the angle of your shot. Typically, I find that you can get all the focus points you need in about 6 to 12 shots. Now, you can absolutely shoot more, but it quickly becomes diminishing returns, and honestly, it just takes longer to process the focus stack on the other end. Speaking of processing, it looks like we're good here, so let me turn off the camera and take the SD card over to the Right, so now we're in Adobe Lightroom Classic, and I've ingested all the photos off the SD card. And something I recommend doing before diving into focus stacking is going ahead and applying any processing to your images while you still have them in a nice, malleable, raw format. In Lightroom, it's really easy to process a single image and then sync those settings across all the rest. And if we click through them, you can see how the depth of field shifts across the images. So on this one, the prop and spinner are nice and sharp and in focus, while back here, the tails of blur. But as we click through them, that changes. So on this one, the focus point is moved back, and now the prop and spinner are blurred, while the scoops are in focus and the tail is nearly so. Now this is all in Lightroom, and to focus stack, we need to head over to Photoshop. The way I like to do this is to select all the images I want in my stack by clicking on the first image, then shift plus clicking on the last one. This will select all of them. After they're selected, right click and select edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. For some reason, this stupid ass recording software isn't picking up the right click pop-up menu. But yeah, all you do is select open in layers in Photoshop and then go make a coffee or something while Photoshop makes your CPU and your GPU cry for a minute or two. Okay, now we're over in Photoshop and the image here looks completely different. Because it is, because on my first take, the only thing that showed up was the Photoshop user interface and not the actual images. The steps are exactly the same here though, so no need for alarm, you know, unless you're just the really panicky type. So if you look over on the right, you'll see that all the images from Lightroom loaded up as layers in Photoshop. Now before we do anything, we need to make sure that we select all of those layers. So click the first one, and then shift click the last one. Boom, there we go. Now first we need to get all these images aligned. As you change focus points, you're actually causing the glass in the lens to shift slightly and that can also slightly change each image so that they won't perfectly align. In fact, the greater front to back distance between focus points, the greater a misalignment you can expect. To fix that, we're gonna go to select Edit and then Auto Align Layers. Leave it as Auto and then hit OK and let Photoshop do its beep boop bop magic. And here we are with the aligned layers. So if we were to click into any one of the single layers, they would now all pretty much match this exact outline, which is good. Next up, head back to Edit, and then down to Auto Blend Layers. Here you want to be on Stack Images and leave the bottom boxes checked. 
You can also use this tool to do panoramas, but we're not, so leave it alone and click OK. Adobe will quickly consume your computer's resources as it performs whatever dark sorcery it performs. And it may take a few minutes depending on how many images you're stacking, how large the files are, how shitty your computer is, and so on. Just let it do its thing. When it's done, you'll see your shitty, blurry image snap into sharp focus, and it's glorious. That snap has become one of my favorite moments in modeling, right up there with removing masking or installing tank tracks for the final time. As you can see, we've got nice, sharp focus across the entire P38 here. And one thing I like to do while I'm over here visiting Photoshop land is to go to Filter, Sharpen, and Unsharp Mask since I just really like the way that it sharpens a bit more than what happens over in Lightroom. Once that's done, it's also a good idea to go ahead and flatten the image by going to Layer and Flatten Image. Otherwise, watching your computer try to save this damn thing could be like watching a snake try to swallow a bowling ball. Once it's flattened, just save it and hop back over to Lightroom. Okay, here we are back in Lightroom with the first focus stacked image. Just roll with it. Okay, here's the one we just did. Now, for who knows why, Lightroom will stick your new focus stacked hotness second to last among your selected images. And here it is at location 32. And here you can see there's this last little dangler here. If for whatever reason you lose track of which one of these is your focus stacked image, just look for the TIFF file extension. That's your stacked image. And if we zoom in, we can see how nice and sharp and in focus the whole subject is. Now, typically, at this point, I would go ahead and select all the raw images that went into making up the stacked image and hit X to dump them into Lightroom's reject pile. But because I'm going to be using them for the purposes of this video, they're getting a stay of execution for a while. But again, you can just hit X to reject them or you can just hit delete to, you know, delete them. Anyway, that's the basics of focus stacking from capturing the images to dealing with them in Lightroom, actually stacking them in Photoshop and then bringing your kick-ass result back to Lightroom. I hope this little tutorial proved useful and maybe gave you a better sense of what's involved with focus stacking. And if you did find it useful and worth your time, I'd really love it if you'd toss a good old like and subscribe my way. The more of both, the more likely this video is to get recommended by YouTube's cold, unfeeling algorithm. Anyway, that's that. Good luck with your own focus stacking adventures, and I'll catch y'all later.